tell you how much it's worth. Yeah. No, because you'll beat me up and nick it. <laughs> um, last I heard it was going for a thousand pounds. My name is George Giorgio and I'm 63 years old. I was one of the most prolific designers of flyers for the club and acid house scene of the 1980s and 1990s. And I helped popularise the iconic smiley face. Do I remember the first time I heard acid house? It wasn't called Acid House at the time, really. It was just a term that, that happened, you know. I mean, I remember Nicky Holloway promoting people like Pete Tong, Giles Peterson, Carl Cox. These guys became the people that kind of made Acid House, I suppose. And they became the stars, yeah. Danny Rampling, he came to the studio with his wife, Jenny, and he said, I've done this night called Shum. Can you do me another flyer? And I said, any special request you want, any particular images? And he said, a smiley face. And he said, yeah, that's my own requirement. I want a smiley face on it. Did I make them look like ecstasy pills? The answer to that is, hands up, yes, I did. I did that, but at the same time, I have to say that I was quite heavily influenced at the time by 3D graphics, computer-generated graphics. I just drew them kind of tumbling down one side of the flyer. I just, I don't know, it was one of those light bulb moments, I think, that'll make it look three-dimensional. Wow, it looks like a, looks like a pill. And suddenly t-shirts started appearing and it was the happy smiley face which was what a lot of people on ecstasy <laughs> looked like. When you walked into an acid house club it was like walking into another dimension. It was just unbelievable. The atmosphere was just electric but electric in a fantastically warm way. Everybody was just as one. The lights, the atmosphere, the music, the aura that was given off by everyone was just another dimension. It was the only way I can describe it, honestly. The Astoria, which was a traditional theatre venue, and everybody was up on the tables, all dancing. It was just like a wall of dancing people to the music, which is just going full pelt, obviously. So I remember somebody pointing out to me, you see all those guys over there that are sitting down on the floor, all cuddling up to each other, telling each other how much they love each other. They were all Millwall. They were on the terraces last week. This isn't, these aren't sweat stains. This is where they've been stored away for, months, for years. But look at the size of this thing. It was so hot. People started wearing t-shirts, baggier clothes. A lot of bandanas as well. People wearing dungarees. The hair got longer. It kind of did take that sort of hippie-ish look. And the great thing about ecstasy is that nobody knew about it. I remember coming out of trip and the traffic was stopped because people were dancing in the streets. It's raining and people are dancing in the streets and the police haven't got a clue what's going on. The police didn't know about ecstasy at that time. And people would flash their headlights and people would dance to it. It was just madness. It wasn't even a, an iota of, um, of bad feeling or violence or anything like that at all. I have very definite um, recollections of when the media turned on the whole scene and um, basically ruined it. Um, somebody mentioned to me that um, the sun had put it on their front pages for the next day, um, going on about this terrible acid scene that was going on and these kids were off their heads on drugs. And then the next thing you know, it was all over the press, it was in the news. I regret to say that drugs are associated with acid house parties. The Kent police were once again out checking cars after reports that crowds were once again gathering for a party. And they didn't know about it. They imagined we were all off our heads on acid. And it was just wasn't anything like that. But it made headlines sell papers, you know. So this one, this is Kew, this is at Kew Gardens. It's a one-off at Kew Gardens. Valentine's Day at Do at the zoo. So that was at London Zoo. This one was at Lord's Cricket Ground. This was the Last Dance 87. That was a flyer for City of Angels, where I did the logo. This was the first raw flyer that I did. And we folded it up and we put it into a pill. I don't think we went out purposely to create a different aesthetic. The clubs initially started in, in warehouses. It was the it was antithesis to what was going on in normal posh clubs. I was never qualified as a graphic designer. I just loved graphic design and I was qualified as an interior designer. I figured that one of these guys that I was working for would eventually go and find a club and say, I've got this venue, can you design it for me? And that's what happened. When Nicky Holloway gave up Sin, he took over a small venue across the road, called it the Milk Bar, and I got to do the interior. What effect did that um, era have on nightlife afterwards? Dance music was a, a, a monster unleashed, you know. Everybody suddenly was going clubbing. Do I think there could ever be the same kind of revolution? We talk about that. I mean, it was a kind of a revolution. Us old people sit around wondering if it's ever going to happen again. Um, um, it's down to the youth, basically, to do it.